Hello, we're here on Thursday afternoon at the Prosper Broom Money Matters Cafe in the Town Hall. Um, I'm here with Claire, I'm Anne. Um, so we're here every Thursday afternoon from two till four. Um, so any, any financial, any money matters, anything that you want to talk about that's even vaguely associated with money, please come and see us and we'll help you with paperwork or explain letters from the bank or anything like that. This week, we're talking about building a savings habit. Um, I know it's really difficult to think about putting money aside when everyone's budgets are really tight at the moment. But what's going to give you resilience in the future when you do hit a bump in the road, if you've got a cushion, if you've got a nest egg um, hidden away somewhere, then that's going to help you get over that bump in the road without having to take out the more expensive loans or, or go into debt. Um, because if you've, if you've got savings set aside, you might be able to cushion that, that bump in the road. Um, so we're going to talk about okay. building a savings habit. Um, and I suppose the, the first bit of guidance I'll give you is, is start small. People overestimate how much They've got available at the beginning of the month. Um, and you don't want to lock away anything or put aside anything that you're going to need later on in the month. Um, so start small, um, maybe, you know, a, a, a few pounds, just a few pounds, but make that, um, that saving automatic. So start small and work out how much you can afford to set aside regularly so whether that's every week or every month um, and then make it automatic by asking your bank or, or building society to make that transfer happen perhaps as soon as you've paid you've been paid so at the beginning of the month you've just been paid set the money aside um, at that point it's it's called paying yourself first so think about your future self and how much you'll appreciate having that that money set aside um, so set up a standing order, make it automatic. Um, but then, although you've started small, try and increase it regularly. Um, and perhaps several times in the year, just have a review, just have a look at what you're spending, what you're getting in. Is, is there any space to add to the amount that you're, mm -hmm. you're saving each month? Maybe beginning of the year, New Year's resolution, you could have a look and see if you could increase it on your birthday, and maybe when the clocks change, you know, um, in, in spring and autumn. Just just have a look at those, those times in the year, whether you can increase the amount that you're saving. Um, if you've managed to pay off a regular bill, so say you've managed to pay off a credit card bill, or there's, there's one area of expense you've cancelled a magazine subscription because you weren't reading it anymore. Um, so there's an area of expense that you've cancelled. Could you redirect that money to your savings? Because presumably you weren't missing it because it was going out regularly. You've cancelled that expense. Can you now redirect that? So if you weren't missing it before, you perhaps still won't miss it in the future. Um, and rather than just frittering away that that extra money that you've got in could you could you put it into your into your savings instead and the other thing is if your income's gone up so we've talked about getting rid of an expense but say your income's gone up you've got just got a pay rise or the benefits have gone up or your pension's gone up so if if the amount that you're getting in has gone up then you could think well i'm i'm not going to miss it i'm not going to let my lifestyle creep up to that new income, I'm going to carry on my same lifestyle and redirect those those savings mm -hmm. um, in, in, into my savings. Um, and then I suppose the last thing is if you really want to get techie about all of this, you could investigate some of the automatic savings apps that you could get from your phone. With, with open banking now, with banks making your banking information available to all of these apps for your phone, you might find that there's something that does the automatic analysis of your expenditure and your income, um, does automatic saving suggestions, 
um, and also perhaps rounds up your purchases. There are some apps that will look at your supermarket spend and say you're spending £31.24, it could round it up to £32, or it, you might ask it to round up to the nearest £5 or the nearest £10. Is that going to do it every single time? So if I, excuse me, going to the supermarket and buying £5 worth of groceries, I'm going to say £15 worth of groceries, would it automatically round it up? 32, 35, whatever. Well, no, it would it would round up to the nearest pound or the nearest five pounds right. or the nearest. Ten. So you so said if I spent fifteen pounds, it would round it up to wherever. So if you I set the limit. Pounds fifty, it would round up to twenty pounds. So you yeah, you would decide I want I want it to round up to the nearest pound yeah. or I want it to round up to the nearest five pounds or okay. the nearest ten pounds. So you would decide how much the roundup is. Yeah. So, some, some of them will just round up to the nearest pound. So it yeah. will be pennies that you are going in. Yeah. The idea being that you're not going to miss that small change. It's yeah. a bit, bit like, you know, finding small change down the back of the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's yeah. just automatically rounding up. Okay. And, and some of them really are quite, quite sophisticated mm -hmm. and will, will analyze all of your expenditure. Mm -hmm. um, will my bank do that? Your, the bank itself might do, so you might find, depending on who you bank with, that they have an app that helps you. Right. Um, you, you probably have to sign up to online banking um, in, oh, in order that. to do that, mm -hmm. but, but you might find that your bank, or it might be another paid for um, app that yeah. you buy. Some of them are free. Um, some of them, yes, work with your bank, and some of them are a bank in, in their own right. right. So one of these challenger digital-only banks, so they don't have a, a, a branch that you could visit. A challenger bank. A challenger bank. Uh, well, it's not a high street bank. Okay. It's one that's been set up relatively recently, trying to disrupt the way that mm. the traditional high street banks are working mm. with all of these technological advances. Mm -hmm. So... They do, they do rely on you having a mobile phone. They do rely on you doing digital banking, but so something like Swallow, is it Swallow, Swift? Um, yes, yeah, Swift, Swift payments, but Revolut no, and Monzo. No, yeah, no, um, I know Monzo. No, there's another bank, like something like Swift Swallow or, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yes. Okay. If I, if I just name these, these apps and then you might want to look on online and 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 have a look at them look at the reviews and and see if you want to download them and and, and try them out so there's one called chip and that will save the change so yeah. this idea of rounding up um your your supermarket spend for example um crew which is k-r-o-o -O, um and that will again save save the change um plum um, that's a bit more sophisticated, P-L-U-M, and that will analyse your income and expenditure um, and, and look at intelligent savings. Yeah. Um, and Revolut, which is one of these challenger banks, right. um, so that will, will deal with payments and, and, and everything, but also this, this automatic savings, so paying yourself first in, yeah. in the month. Um, Moneybox. Um, Moniz, which is M-O-N-E-S-E, -E, and that again offers Money, these these yeah. roundups, um, and then Monzo, which is again one of these challenger banks. Mm -hmm. So with with all of these ideas, and you can get as as techy as you want to, or as old school as you want to, just by th setting up a standing order to a savings account. But in all of these, it's the idea of making it automatic starting small but regularly trying to increase the amount that you're saving so the aim is eventually that you'll have an emergency fund something that you can call on when you need to so that when you hit a bump in the road you don't have to resort to taking out a loan you don't have to go into debt you can deal with the expense without without causing yourself more problems and if 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 i was to set up one of these online things would that help increase my credit scores oh it it, it might do um not necessarily though mm. um really the the credit score is probably more geared to um not defaulting okay. on um payments that you've already got or right. other commitments that you've already set up mm -hmm. yeah
Okay, so. It really depends on your circumstances, but if last week we talked about budgeting, so when you've done your budget and you've worked out how much you're spending on a on a monthly basis, you could think about putting aside six months of essential expenditure. We talked about essential and discretionary expenditure um, last week. So of the essential items, keeping a roof over your head, food on the table, heating, lighting, <laughs> getting to work. Um, so all of that essential expenditure, if you work out how much you, you need to spend um, on a monthly basis, if you had six or up to 12 months worth of essential expenditure set aside, then that's really going to help you say you lost your job or there's another big change in your circumstances, then that's really going to give you a good cushion um, and, and really build your financial resilience for the future. Okay, thanks very much.